I have a deep and abiding passion of playing with dolls for a living. Every single frame, as you're moving these puppets, as you're moving all these different things, it's kind of like a chess match. It's like there's, a, there's strategy going on. But then there's spontaneity. There's some imagination that happens in, in the mix too. And so you're somehow trying to figure out how you can coax a, a performance out of this inanimate object. When you see something that springs to life, it's like a little miracle. Most kids love animation. I think the thing that made me a little bit unusual is that I wanted to learn how it was done. And so I would go in my parents' basement or garage and just, you know, with like these old trinkets and stuff, you try to make these things happen, even though I have no idea what I was doing. These things that you see on screen that have life, that are moving, that are talking, that are emoting, they're inert objects. The only life that anything has on the screen is by virtue of the life that the animator imbues into these objects. And I think that there's something that's just, that's really beautiful and human about that, that you're seeing effectively the hands of an artist at work that is bringing life, that is coaxing life to this inanimate thing. And that really is the closest thing to magic that I've ever seen. Animation generally takes a long time, stop motion. I mean, it really is filmmaking at the pace of a glacier. It is so slow. We have about 20, 25 animators working on the show at any given time. They do about five seconds of footage per animator. So on a really good week, where the, you know, we're all oiled up and everything's, everything, all the pistons are firing and everything is, is going according to plan, we'll get maybe two minutes of footage. It really is a labor of love. You put so much of yourself into it. We gravitate to, to those things that are meaningful to us, but are things that, have, have, you know, that are thought provoking, that are emotional emotionally resonant that we think will be enduring. I think the Night Boys have a long history of disappointing their fathers. My dad's dad, he was a lawyer, and when his son told him that he wanted to make, you know, fancy little running shoes for a living, it broke his heart. And I think you can't help but feel some degree of pressure when you grow up in the shadow of someone who's tremendously successful, someone who's an innovator. That's a lot to live up to. But at the same time, uh, he's just a guy and he's my dad. He gave me that really meaningful advice, which is find that thing that you were put on this earth to do and, and give it everything you have. I think there is something that's a little bit primal about stop motion in the sense that it's almost evocative of a beloved child's play thing being brought to life. I see with my with my youngest kid, my, my youngest boy is three years old. He's got his little action figures, his little superhero dolls. And you know, he's doing the little voices and he's moving. He's creating these little scenarios, things I observe my kids doing you know, things that they say, they get woven into these movies. Uh, the way the Coraline moved was inspired by my daughter. The way Norman moved in Paranorman, that was inspired by the way my son was moving at that time in his life. There's so many different aspects of your own life that you weave into your stories. My inspiration above all else is always my family.